Welcome to the energy update for the new moon in Cancer. This is the first Cancer lunation of two consecutive Cancer lunations, and it's a really powerful time. We are setting into motion a galactic lunar cycle, meaning that we are setting into motion a six month work of art. So I'm Shannon, I'm your host for Lunar Ladies, and this is the YouTube channel where we give you a weekly energy update. Now the focus is the new moon in Cancer that's happening at summer solstice with an annular solar eclipse at the zero point field. Lots to cover today for the energy update. And so we're gonna break this down. We're gonna look at the multi-dimensional layers of this lunar cycle that's happening on June 20th, 2020. So we've got, and it's really coming to a culmination or a completion in winter solstice, December 20th, 2020, where we have another big event happening, the meeting of the Oak King and the Holly King, Jupiter and Saturn at zero degrees Aquarius, starting a, the Aquarian age, right? Starting the future. It's setting into motion the future. And this next six months is critical mass because we are looking at what is it going to take for us to create the world that the masses would love to live in? Not the 1%, right? The 99. And what does the 99%, the, the mass population, world population, how do you think and feel and know that the masses would like to live? My feeling is that the masses would like to live in peace, harmony, justice, fairness, kindness, across the board to reset the frequency so that everyone has what they need, the unalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness across the board worldwide. Isn't that the world that you would like to live in? I'm sure it is. Now take note that the 99%, meaning the majority of the masses, and then we have a 1% ruling elite class that basically hoards the resources around the planet and does some puppet mastery uh, and manipulation, social engineering around our everyday world that we perceive as a random act or event that it makes up our reality. But we have the help of the cosmos coming in to assist us to awaken and become more aware of who we are, our power, and then what we can do as a united front, a group with, of like heart, like-minded people coming together uh, with a single point of focus uh, that moves us into the future. Now, some of us in the esoteric spiritual circles say, well, that's the call of the light worker, the star seed, all across the cosmos, heard the plea to come at this time to incarnate on planet Earth to do a specific mission together. And that would be to wake up together and assist in the raising of the personal frequency individually, as well as the planetary frequency into a state of unity consciousness based and rooted in unconditional love, forgiveness, compassion, empathy, and kindness. Are you up for the challenge? I am. <laughs> and so what it's gonna take is, now I come, from it from a different personal experience and my lens comes through uh, having swam with wild dolphins uh, in the ocean free it was their choosing to come and swim with me because i can't swim as fast as them <laughs> but they found me i found them and since 2011 i've had multiple opportunities to swim in pods of wild dolphins and they're my friends the Hawaiian spinner dolphins off the Kona coast of the Big Island. Now, through that experience or that collection of experiences, my personal frequency has changed uh, on many levels. First being that I was in the Pacific Ocean, in the salt water, which is very healing. The Hawaiian waters, the color can heal you, the turquoise waters. And so I was in this, uh, just thinking about it, go right there. <laughs> so being in the beautiful Hawaiian waters and, and being in paradise and you know staying on the big island, which is an active volcano, and it's there for us to transform, especially when you come onto the island in a sacred way. 
honoring the people, the culture, the gods and goddesses, the energetics of being in that space, not taking anything home. You leave the rocks where you find them and the shelves, right? You honor the area that you, that you find yourself. So I had multiple opportunities to discover that and then to meet local people who uh, taught me in uh, many wonderful ways how to be uh, in, to honor and to really open up and become part of that ohana, that family. And that was on the land. Now I get into the water, a whole other environment with a whole other group of beings uh, that wanted to play and meet and connect and do something great together. And so in these swims where we go out at early in the morning when they, the dolphins would come in closer to the bay to rest and we swam with them in a quiet and silent way because we were honoring that they were here with us and that they were sleeping and resting. We didn't want to disturb their peace and their ability to um, regenerate after a long night out in the deep waters fishing and doing their thing out there. So it was very respectful. And uh, I learned how to swim with them in a respectful way that honored their, their freedom. Right? It's all about freedom right now. And so from those experiences, and I not only got sonared <laughs> multiple times, uh, but I also got other things activated in my personal frequency and vibration. So I was uplifted in multiple ways, not only from the sonar, that recalibrated my energy system and helped me uh, hemi-sync my brain so that I could operate from both left and right brain at the same time. So I shifted into a different personal vibration and through one of their mediums was, is unconditional love. So I had multiple emotional breakthroughs by being washed and, and held and bathed in this beautiful energetic frequency of multiple dolphins Sending me unconditional love, right? What happens to you? Just take for a moment, imagine yourself in a ocean of unconditional love all directed right at you, acknowledging you, validating you, loving you, appreciating you, so excited as you're excited to be with them. I mean, this was a life-changing experience that happened multiple times. And so one of the things I realized is that what humanity is the task at hand is not only to come together and be a united front, but the, the individual task is to awaken your core root self and to heal through the uh, oceanic awareness of self-love. And that's where we're coming to with this energy update for the new moon in Cancer. We get two lunations. First one, June 20th, summer solstice at zero degrees Cancer, meaning at the zero point field which is where we can take that, that moment to reset. And I'll get into the reset energy in just a bit. We have a second lunar cycle, July 20th at 29 degrees. Cancer right at the edge, critical degree before the sun moves into the sign of Leo. So when you look at zero and 29, you get the spectrum of the Cancer vibration. And then we go back just a little bit in time when were we having a wave of destiny flowing through our collective consciousness from 29 degrees Cancer to zero degrees Cancer? What was that? The nodal wave in the Cancer Capricorn energy, north node in Cancer, south node in Capricorn, the dragon's head in Cancer, the dragon's tail uh, unwinding the past in Capricorn. When did that happen? November 7th, 2018 to May 6, 2020. So we're not only getting this chance to reset, we also want to go back in time because cancer likes the past. And we're going to look what was going on in our community, our world. Look at the world events from November 7th, 2018 to May 6, 2020. What has taken place? So much has taken place. Oh my God. Even in just January 2020 to now. But now we get an extended view. Go back November 7, 2018. That's the nodal wave timeline for the nodal wave in Cancer, which we are now repeating and getting a second wave of that or a second uh, view, understanding, experience to raise our personal frequency from the gifts of Cancer. And the gifts of Cancer are, the, Cancer is the womb, the mother. 
and how we heal through the vibration of cancer is through self-love. And that's the next step for each individual to take. And if you're gathering together and coming together for certain causes and helping uh, uh, each other, that's a beautiful thing. But now the real work begins. You have awakened. Something called you to go out, join a, join a movement, do this, do that. Don't stop there. That just says you have an ability to be passionate about something, right? You got bothered. You got fearful. You got something. Now you're, you're, something has shifted and changed, and you're now in a more present field of your awareness. And so now what you want to do is you want to take the next step and individualize it by coming in to your core root self. The moon rules the sign of cancer. The moon in your natal chart is the symbol of your core root self. So find your natal moon, find the sign, the degree, and the house that it is in your natal chart, what's aspecting it, meaning other planets aligning to it in certain ways. That's your story of your personal self. And so when you want to go to that core, because this is where we bloom and create a new world. And so as I'm looking at the timing of things, so let's just make note of that. The sun moves into Cancer. And that's the longest day of the year in the Northern Hemisphere, and it's summer solstice. So it's a day of great celebration that has happened on this planet from time in memoriam. Our pagan ancestors all celebrated across the planet. All these monuments, Stonehenge, right? The sun comes through, it's beautiful. So it's a, it's a reset day. It's also in the Celtic mythology when it's, we celebrate Letha, and Letha, the fertile goddess, impregnated on, on Beltane from the, the Sun King. They dance together and she has her pregnant belly. That's why Cancer's soft and round, because it's Letha, the pregnant goddess. And so they celebrate this day. It's great. Sun King, which is the Oak King, right? And that tradition of looking at how to explain what's going on. So that's happening, right? And that's great cause for celebration. And then we the moon has been tracking and now comes in alignment with the zero degree sun in cancer. So summer solstice sun, it goes, whoa, ready for a new moon. And it's like, wow, we're going to do a new moon at zero degrees, potent power, zero point field of creation. It's the time to do a reset. What are we resetting? Our core root self, our moon self into a, a new vibration of individualized experience of self-love. I brought up my dolphin experience because that was my doorway to returning to my core root self to bloom from a place of self-love. I got acknowledged. They healed my most primal pain in, in two seconds. It happened like that. It was amazing. I could tell you a whole huge story about that another time. But I use that as my personal story as an example of to explain what is happening and what's available to each and every one of you right now. We're at a great reset. And you're hearing that in the, in the collective from a financial reset, a social economic reset, a, a you know, social justice reset. You know, this is great, yes. But we wanna really come home deep inside ourselves and ask what is the reset that it needs to take place for the future that I want to in the world that I want to live in and be a part of, the reset takes place at the core self. And in astrology, we define that through the moon. So definitely go find your moon sign to find out your story. Now I invite you at this time to join me in my free community. And you can find that at club.lunarladies.com. It's a new free space off of Facebook. Why are we off of Facebook? Because Facebook is, uh, um, has, is set at a frequency that is not in harmony with doing a great work together. There's distractions, there's polarity, there's duality. It's a little bit like the Wild West. So we say, thank you, Facebook. You're awesome. Keep doing what you're doing, bringing people together, wonderful. But you, we have vibed out, and we're gonna do this sacred work together as a, a community of awakening souls to find that place of self-love, get into that knowledge of their your core root self, your moon self. Learn how the moon works. This is really my, my passion. It's not to honor or worship the moon, but it's to understand how it works. Because why? When I was swimming with the dolphins, they told me, they said, hey, look, this is what, this is what life is like on planet Earth. 
you have to know your environment, right? What environment are you living in? So they showed me they live in the ocean. They have to understand how the ocean works. The ocean uh, tides are ruled by the moon. So they said in order to understand your environment, you have to understand the moon because it's magnetically pulling you in certain directions. And then they gave me the, you know, the ocean of which they live in, but they said for humanity, they have to understand the ocean is also consciousness and emotions and feelings and thoughts. You're living in a sea of soup, right? With something that's controlling you, right? And so what we do in Lunar Ladies is we say hello to that. Hi, Moon. How do you work, by the way? Oh, oh, I see how you work. You're in, you have cycles and rhythms and patterns and you, you, you know, I, I, we figured out your mechanism of that you're a clock. Oh, how does the clock work, right? And then we start tracking it through our own personal frequency, which is our natal chart. And then we get really good at understanding the mechanism so that we can anticipate something that's coming and say, you know what? I'm not available for that. I'm not actually uh, working on this, this clock mechanism. I, I see how it works and I'm like, I can step outside of it and utilize its strength and power, but to create in a positive way where I'm not unconsciously being manipulated and controlled by it. I'm consciously aware and awake to it and I can make new choices and be here now. <laughs> More of that in the Lunar Ladies Club. So when you come over to the Lunar Ladies Club, you get a make a free account, set up your profile, it's super fun, get to know amazing people all over the world. And we're coming together to do something great and to learn something of value together to give it out into the world. Now, when you're in the Lunar Ladies Club, then you have an opportunity to come into having a more premium experience. And that's our the paid monthly group called the Inner Circle. And that's where I work with you, like a group mastermind, learning your astrology chart, understanding who you are at your core root self, helping you uh, practice, and live consciously and in the present moment now. So why? So that you can enact your soul purpose and be a powerful creator out in the world and do what you came to do here on planet Earth and do it in the company of other people who are like-hearted and like-minded. So finding your pod. So definitely come over and check us out. But I want to end this energy update with um, there's another big thing happening and we want to be aware of it and see it for what it is so that we can uh, help it uh, grow into its real possibility, higher possibility, rather than a lower frequency possibility. We wanna say, oh, this is great, let's take it up a notch, because we're conscious. Okay, so we have the summer solstice, we have the new moon, now we have the annual solar eclipse that creates it like a galactic new moon. An eclipse is ending an old cycle, so a new cycle can begin. An eclipse is like a photograph that's taken in that moment that takes six months to develop. So we'll see it on winter solstice. Now, because of the nature of what's happening with the two cancer lunations, and we have 0 0.29 critical degree, which, re which is a mirror of the cancer nodal wave from November 7th to May 6, 2020. So I look at the two Sabian symbols for the Cancer, not a wave, 29 degrees, a daughter of the revolution. Hi! <laughs> and then zero degrees Cancer, one on a ship, one flag lower, so another one is raised. So it's a changing of the guards. And, and then we have the daughter of a revolution. And some amazing astrologists, like uh, my good buddy Robert Phoenix, he has pointed out that there are a lot of young women being tasked or being um, connected to, to create a movement. And he uh, shared a lot of wonderful information about a movement called the Sunrise Movement, which is targeting young women. So I'm like, oh my God, young women. And then we have the Sabian symbol of the daughters of a revolution. Don't they, they're talking to each other. So when I looked at that, I was like, hmm, What's going on here? <laughs> Mama Bear is in the house and taking a look. What's that really happening? And so Cancer energy, I'm a sun in Cancer. And I have my Mars and Venus in Cancer all conjunct. So I'm very, at the, at the early degrees. So I'm very Cancer-like. 
<laughs> and I got a long memory and I like to investigate the past, but I like to gather information so that I could teach it and, and share it and tell it. And so when we look at this opportunity for uh, young women or daughters to rise, we look at the energy of daughter. What is a daughter? It's a woman that is, has a mother, right? So it's not like a woman, a girl, it's a daughter. So the role of daughter has a parent, mother or father or both, right? And so when we see these young, the young, younger generation, a lot of them feminine, female, rising, they need a parent to be a daughter of a revolution. They can't just go out and be a young person they don't have enough wisdom, experience, time on the planet. They need the, the apprenticeship, the tutelage of elder wise people, people who are more parental. And then Robert B has pointed out so eloquently that they're kind of in this being told to reject their parents. No, 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 we're not doing that. No, no, no. Why? Then they're no longer a daughter of the revolution, which is where the highest frequency sits. There's something else. And so we want to just say hello to that and go, hmm, isn't that interesting? So if you have a young children or you're, have the younger generation in your home, you want to uh, help them understand the power of working with elders who come from a wise state. And then the personal frequency that they need to be focused on in raising is self-love, self-love not selfishness or, you know, trying to get rid of the, the parents and the people of authority. Um, we have to see them, everyone, for who they are, the roles they're playing. But when we look astrologically, cosmically, we need that divine parent energy to help us with this revolution that wants to take place. So when we look at the uh, Chandra symbol for zero degrees cancer, it's a potter at work. So we're, we're molding, shifting, and creating a work of art by cultivating the mind, by coming into a place of stillness, by feeling and moving the clay around and making something beautiful. And that something beautiful will be developed by Winter Solstice 2020. And so it's interesting with the eighth lunar mansion of the zero degree Cancer New Moon, it's, about, it's called the gap. So we have a gap right now where we have these moments, these movements and these and moments and movements and things happening, shift and change, shift and change. One flag's lowering, another one wants to come up, right? But how, is it, how are we going to do that at the highest frequency from a personal frequency of self-love? And the Lunar Mansion says, well, acknowledge the gap here. And the gap is about soft power, right? Soft power, which is very cancer-like. It's being guided by the heart. It's about protecting oneself and going, wait a minute, I'm going to take a look at you. Like, go meet the parents, right? If you want to date the child or, you know, you want to date the, the young person or, you know, you're going to go meet the parents. And the parents are like, you're not going on a date till I meet who, who are you, who's driving, who's doing what, because they're protecting you, right? So we want to acknowledge the value and the importance of that and get our heads on straight, right? And, and start moving into our heart. Let us be moved by our hearts instead of our lower minds that are, are very easily manipulated. And so take your time, go in, be in, feel what's happening. If your body says, ugh, I don't like the feeling of that, you gotta pause and take note of that and go, why? Because bodies don't lie. Bodies go, mm, I don't like it. Oh, yay, it feels good. But the mind is very easily manipulated, especially during this time of Gemini in the nodal wave, Mercury retrograde. They're twins. There's always going to be two. And especially in a state of duality, it presents two because it wants to divide and conquer us. So it says good and bad, divide, pick one. And we're like, you know what? There are two. What if we come and bring them together, see them from a neutral state, and go, hmm, I think there's a better choice than that. <laughs> Thank you for sharing, right? <laughs> so that's your energy update. If you like this video, share it. Uh, definitely subscribe. I do these weekly, taking a look at the 
uh, lunar phases, casting a chart, seeing the story. That's my forte is uh, I understand the language of astrology and I use it to tell stories. Looking at the past so that we don't repeat it, so that we have a fresh new start to create a future of our dreams. Thanks so much for listening. See you next week for the first quarter moon in Libra.